is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Arizona. Last night, we had some history at Chase Field. Josh Colmenter threw his first career shutout and became just the second D-backs pitcher after Randy Johnson to face the minimum 27 batters through nine innings. Tonight, the spotlight returned to the pitcher's mound, and this time it's on Bronson Arroyo, who after eight years and more than 100 wins in Cincinnati, now faces his former teammates. It's the D-backs and the Reds on Fox Sports Arizona. The heat is on in the great state of Arizona where the D-backs have turned up the temperatures on some home cooking. Friday Night Baseball presented by your helpful Valley Honda dealers. Five wins in their last six here. What a week it's been for fans at Chase Field. Walk-off homers, eight-run innings, and last night Josh Colmenter's masterpiece. And now tonight, it's Bronson Arroyo facing his former team and the former Sun Devil. He used to mentor. It's Mike Leak. Good evening from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthium and Bob Brenly along the way. This is game two of a four-game series. It's the D-backs and the Cincinnati Reds. So Bronson Arroyo on the mound here for the Diamondbacks. Bob, against his former team, I guess it's almost like a newly single guy on a blind date getting matched up with his ex-wife. I mean, how much knowledge is too much? Well, that's one way to put it. Uh, certainly the Reds know Bronson very well. We've seen this site many times. Bronson Arroyo with Chase Anderson. Bronson Arroyo with Patrick Corbin. Bronson was brought here to help his team win ball games, but a really nice byproduct is his ability to mentor the younger pitcher, something he did for the last four years for his opposite number tonight, Mike Leak, a willing and eager student. Really good matchup tonight of the teacher and the pupil. Now, earlier today, I put out on the Twitter a, a home version of the game. We'll play along tonight. Bronson Bingo. How does this work? I don't know. It's first day for everything, but, uh, you know, we've seen Bronson Arroyo pitch between 70 and 90, and we've commented that he hits every velocity in between, so we thought we'd have a little fun with it tonight. Uh, you see the under 69, there may be a few of those over 90. Yeah, we'll see about that, but hopefully Bronson will fill in every square on the card tonight. So check the velocities, check your board at home, and play along with us. Bronson Bingo here at Chase Field. It's the Reds and the Diamondbacks game two of this four-game series. What an opener it was last night. Speaking of solid pitching, more on Josh Colmenter's masterpiece from the first game of the series. It's Arizona Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. Back from Chase Field after this.
Baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Jack in the Box. If the D-backs hit a home run today, score a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow with a purchase of a large drink. And welcome back. Bronson Arroyo is set to take the mound tonight and continue what Josh Colmenter started last night with a dominating start. Hi, everybody. Jody Jackson with you to get you set here for first pitch on Fox Sports Arizona. Well, the last time that a pitcher faced the minimum over nine innings, well, it was Randy Johnson's perfect game. But that's what Josh Colmenter did last night. And while it wasn't a perfect game, it actually was more rare. Just the 13th pitcher since 1914 to face the minimum 27 batters in nine innings while still giving up three or more hits. So with that said, here's the reaction from his teammates last night. I think he made quality strikes um, and got contact, got bad contact, uh, and then they hit a few balls hard, and um, we played great defense and, you know, turned a double play here and there. And, um, you know, he was very efficient with a uh, fastball location and um, was able to miss the barrel a lot tonight. He was outstanding, you know. Uh, He's always out there battling, but tonight he, you know, he was, he was even more pinpoint than he's, you know, he's been all year. So, uh, just great watching him out there, and um, I think everyone kind of fed off him. Well, and Josh Colmenter and Bronson Arroyo in their last 13 starts, the team seven and one with a 2.39 ERA. Those two guys have been a big time plus for the starting rotation. Well, Aaron Hill, he was pretty good last night as well. A big bounce back game. A home run last night, and the offense looks to stay hot this evening against Mike Leake. Stay tuned. First pitch coming your way next. Steve and Bob have it for you. Set to lead it off for the Cincinnati Reds. Skip Schumacher right behind. Game two of four at Chase Field. Roof and panels open on a nice Friday night in downtown Phoenix. Brian Price is Cincinnati Reds. Up against the Arizona Diamondbacks. And the home cooking has been the ticket for the D-backs as of late. Bob, they won five in the last six here. Well, we wondered when it was going to start. Uh, Diamondbacks really struggled here at home in the early going. Here's how... Reds are going to line them up tonight. Billy Hamilton in center field. Skip Schumacher in left field tonight. Brandon Phillips, 23 games in his career with nine doubles and four homers here at Chase. Jay Bruce cleaning up. Todd Frazier at third base. Roger Bernardina getting a start at first. Devin Mezzarocco behind the plate. Ramon Santiago at shortstop. And right-hander Mike Leak on the mound for the Reds. Billy Hamilton stepping in against former Red Bronson Arroyo. And we are underway at Chase Field. 
Prado and Goldschmidt well in at the uh, corners, third and first respectively. D-backs did a good job of negating Hamilton's speed last night. Kept him off base in two of his three at-bats with Josh Colmenter's strikeouts and his single in the fourth inning was erased by a double play ball. 247 on the year. The on-base percentage has the leadoff man under 290. And Arroyo jumps ahead one and two. Yeah, we heard Todd Frazier on the pregame show talk about maybe stepping out of the box trying to break Bronson's rhythm out there on the mound. We'll see if the Reds try to do that. Billy Hamilton stepped out before the first pitch of the game. <laughs> A 280 career hitter in five minor league seasons since he was drafted in the second round out of high school in Mississippi. It's on the ground to Goldie. The backhand stop. Arroyo has to hustle to beat Hamilton to the bag. And they once again keep Billy Hamilton off the bases. Boy, that really takes a lot of sting out of the Reds lineup. When you can retire Billy Hamilton, nice play by Goldie going to the backhand. He doesn't waste any time getting the ball to Bronson. That allows Bronson the opportunity to catch the ball and find the base. Got there just in time to get Hamilton. Your Arizona Ford starting pitcher is Bronson Arroyo. Eight years as Cincinnati Red and now up against them. He said this week, honestly, he didn't know if he'd be able to keep a straight face out there on the mound tonight in what he called a very weird situation. Universally liked by his teammates when he was a member of the Reds. Four-time recipient of the Joe Nuxall Good Guy Award in Cincinnati for his dealings with the media and the fan base there in Cincinnati. Very lucky to have him. Strike one to Skip Schumacher getting the start in left field tonight. Schumacher got an extra year to come over to Cincinnati, a two-year, $5 million deal to bolster their bench. But he began his Reds career as a, one of eight Cincinnati players to open the season on the DL. He missed their first 29 games. Dislocated his left shoulder diving for a ball in spring training. Not on the bench tonight because of his numbers against Bronson Arroyo in their respective career. Skip Schumacher 19 for 51. That's a 373 batting average. Not a home run hitter, but he's taken Bronson deep once. That'll get you in the starting lineup. That's the case for a number of players in the red starting lineup tonight. It's Schumacher laces a one out single into right. Second baseman. Bronson Arroyo, eight Brandon seasons in Cincinnati, 265 times he took the baseball to start a game in a Reds uniform. From 2006 through 2013, every fifth day, he was out there for Cincinnati, where he won more than 100 games and pitched nearly 1,700 innings in a Reds uniform. And now he's facing his longtime teammate, Brandon Phillips. Phillips 0 for 3 last night, 271 on the year. Bob, what is the general consensus here if you're Brandon? And I guess it's an easy trap to fall into. Okay, he thinks I'm going to throw this because he knows me, so I'll throw that. But maybe he's expecting that, so I'll throw the other thing. He's got to navigate this. And this will help. Slow roller. Owens turns 2. Bronson Arroyo through a half inning. We are playing ball at Chase Field.
The red hot A.J. Pollock set to lead it off again for the D-backs, playing winning baseball this month. Three games over 500 with two left to play in maybe. No small part to A.J. Pollock at the top of the order. Gerardo Parra batting second. Paul Goldschmidt in his customary three spot. Miguel Montero cleaning up tonight. Martin Prado at third base. Aaron Hill three for four night last night with his fifth homer of the season. Chris Owings, Ender Inciarte, and Bronson Arroyo for the Diamondbacks. A.J. Pollock, another multi-hit game in the leadoff spot last night. Now at 306, the on-base percentage at 355. And the hits have been coming for A.J. in bunches. Last night, a double, a triple, a stolen base. He scored twice. He has had eight hits in his last four games, five of those hits for extra bases. He's on board again to lead it off. Stay hot. Right fielder, wow. number eight. See the ball as big as a beach ball right now. A look on Phantom Cam from Fox Sports. A little bit of a soft line drive into left field. Might have mishit it just a little bit. Yeah, out toward the end, you see the vibration in the bat, but got enough of it to muscle it out over the head of Santiago for a leadoff base hit. Back in the two spot tonight against the right-hander Mike Leak is Gerardo Parra. 262, five homers. Keep an eye on A.J., who is seven for eight in his stolen base attempts this year. Now Bob, we've talked about this Reds lineup and guys that match up well with Bronson Royal offensively. One of them is at first base, Roger Bernardina. He's never been over there before, ever. Not in the majors, not in the minors. He has never played an inning at first base. So how does that impact what you might do in terms of... Uh, you know, leading off the bag, stolen base attempts, so forth. Well, you'd like to think the Diamondbacks uh, would be aware enough to try to put some pressure on Bernardino. Uh, they don't bunt a lot, but guys who are capable of bunting for a base hit maybe want to take one to the first base side to see how Bernardino handles it. Maybe get an extra half a step or so on your lead. Force some pickoff throws from Mike Leak to see if Bernardino can handle that. But defensively, He's a good athlete. I think the bunt plays with runners at first and second might be a little problematic for a guy that's never played there before. Try and apply some pressure. I mean, Bernardina, his first career appearance at first, seven seasons in the big leagues. And it's the first time he's ever played anywhere other than the outfield. Never played there in the minor leagues either. Well, if you've never played on the infield before, it's a, it's a rude awakening. I mean, in the outfield, we see it all the time. Guys practice their swings, looking at their shadow on the ground, and talk to the fans in the stands and the pitchers in the bullpen. <laughs> Seems like there's a lot of downtime, and the ball is, you know, 250, 300 feet away from you. First base, uh, you better be plugged in, especially with runners on. This might be a good situation to try a bunt down there. A.J. takes off, and he is in there. A.J. Pollock, the leadoff man, a single, and now his eighth stolen base of the year. He's actually, so far in this series, played the role of Billy Hamilton. He really has. Gotten on base when he's gotten on. He's made some things happen with his legs. Nice slide. You see how he uses that front foot to quickly hit the base, stop his momentum, pick up the ball, see if there's an overthrow, and possibility of advancing 90 more feet uh, you'll recall in last night's ball game he doubled to open up the first for the D-backs stole third and came in when the throw to get him was thrown into the seats and so we might have a similar situation here tonight with a two and one count on para yeah that was only the 11th unearned run this season for the Reds they've been playing great defense all season long only the Orioles and Cardinals have allowed fewer unearned runs than the Reds Three balls and one strike. As a point of contrast, the Diamondbacks have allowed 31, second most in the majors. Uh, the Indians have allowed 39. Defensive issues early in the season that they've really tightened up recently. And Mike Leak is not a guy that gives up a lot of runs. You have to take advantage of your opportunities against this guy. Three and one. 
Right to the shortstop. Santiago has it. AJ to third, and that's the first out. Your Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the Reds is Mike Leake, 26 year old right hander out of Arizona State. He has not won a game since April 15th, but his ERA, 279, excellent, ranks him 12th best among National League starters. Really good earned run average. The record uh, a little misleading. The bullpen has blown three saves when he was in line for the victory. He's also pitched three other games when uh, he should have won games. All three quality starts came away empty all three times. Paul Goldschmidt. Goldie 305 and 10 homers. He was hitless last night. Intentionally walked once. On the ground is short. This will get a run in. RBI ground out for Goldie. Pollock scores. 1 0 D backs. Manufacturing runs. A leadoff single. A stolen base. Two ground balls. And there's a run. Catch it. Number 26. That's playing back, pretty much conceding that run right there to try to avoid the big inning. In the meantime, the Diamondbacks take an early one to nothing lead. And oh, give a tip of the cap to Gerardo Parr right there. Hit that ground ball up the middle to the shortstop, allowing AJ to move up to third base and score easily on that ground out. Miguel Montero back after the day off last night. Strike one. Gosh, looks like he's mesmerized <laughs> by that baseball. Like I've been hypnotized. Right back to the mound, and Leak corrals that one. Miggy is out, and we are through one. But the Diamondbacks take a one nothing lead. Go board looking. I don't believe we're starting to fill it up already. First pitch of the game was 71 miles per hour. He's starting to spread them around pretty good, which is what we expect from Bronson Royal, which is why we play Bronson Bingo. America's favorite game. We encourage you to play the home version. <laughs> Jay Bruce leads off the second. Roof and panels open. Hot one today. And uh, look at this. Playing Bron I wonder if he's playing Bronson Bingo. Dave Duncan. I'm sure he is. Right behind home plate with the scouts getting a look. And boy, with the shift on, Jay Bruce just shoots it into left, and he is going to hold. Couldn't quite make up his mind there. And see Arte hustling over to pick that one up. He thought hard about two, but he'll settle for one and a big smile from Jay Bruce. 
Yeah, sometimes you get a pitch from the middle of the plate away as a left-handed hitter, and you drive it to the opposite field. Sometimes you cue it right off the end of the bat, trying to pull it into right field, and it works anyway. A little dribbler right through where the third baseman would normally be positioned for a leadoff single. He couldn't quite make up his mind. It was a two or three stutter steps, and coming around that bag at first, he tore up some dirt. Todd Frazier. Ball one. Frazier a strikeout, a pair of ground ball outs in last night's series opener. He was 0 for 3. 265 and 9 homers. This is Jay Bruce trying to make up his mind here coming around first. You know, fortunately, the speed of Ender Inciarte in left field allowed him to get over there. A little bit of a stumble from Bruce, which kind of eliminated any possibility to advance, but a big turn nonetheless. And we saw Todd Frazier step out right there as Bronson Arroyo was getting ready to deliver the next pitch. Gamesmanship? Yeah, absolutely. Center field, that's in there for a base hit. Frazier lines at the center. A pair of red singles to open up the second. Well, we have a moment. Let's take a look at our Valley Honda dealers. Keys to the game. First baseman, number 15. Roger Master and the student. We touched on it in the open of the show. Ryan Leak, or Mike Leak, rather, was always sitting at the right hand of Bronson Arroyo in that Reds dugout for the better part of four seasons learning his craft. It'll be interesting to watch these two go at it here tonight. And don't overthink it. You asked me that in the first inning yeah. for the Reds. Uh, he, he thinks that I think that he thinks that I think he's going to throw a slider. Another base hit is Bernardino. The Shark jumps on the first pitch. And they'll stop Bruce at third. And three singles have loaded the bases for Cincinnati with no outs in the second. Just to put a bow on that, I think Bronson Royal is way too savvy to fall into any kind of patterns that the Reds may be able to uh, discern. Catcher. And look Number at those numbers nine. right there. You would ask, Devin. well, Bernadina Devin. has never played first base ever. Why is he over there? Well, that's it right that's there. It. Six pitches for Arroyo, three hits for the Reds, and the bases are full with no outs. For Devin Mezzarocco, you've got Bruce at third, Frazier at second, and Bernadina at first. And this is a guy that can drive the ball. Mezzarocco at 348 on the year with six homers. He jumps on the first pitch, hits it high and deep to left, and that ball is gone. A grand slam for Mezzarocco, his seventh, and it's 4-1 Cincinnati. He's thrown seven pitches in the inning and given up four hits, including a grand slam. This is a little reminiscent of that Cardinals offense we saw on the last road trip. That tsunami offense when they get guys on base, they just swarm the opposing pitcher. Bronson Arroyo hangs up a breaking ball right there in the middle of the plate to Mezzarocco. Looked like he was sitting on something off speed, and he did not miss it. Ramon Santiago getting the start at shortstop. Mazzarocco has really emerged this year, having a breakthrough offensive season as a power hitter, and he is moving up in the lineup. That's a fair ball on the ground at first. Oop, now it's ruled really foul by Gary Cedarstrom. So a ball and a strike to Santiago. Devin Mazzarocco. Brian Price was talking about the way that Mezzarocco has really hit the ball a lot harder this year. And they love the way he's driving it. He says these are not base hits that he's feathering in front of an outfielder. This guy is hitting the ball hard, and we just saw that. One and two now on Santiago. 194 on the year. Veteran infielder in his 13th big league season. And with the exception of two years in Seattle, he has spent all of that time as a Detroit Tiger. Went to two World Series with the Tigers, 06 and 2012. 
Three balls and two strikes. Arroyo still looking for his first out in the second with four runs already in. Called strike three, and there it is. One away. Pitcher number 44. Backdoor slider from that drop down low three quarters arm angle just nips that outside corner at Denise. And now this would be a good challenge for both. Mike Leake, uh, not only the student for Bronson Arroyo in Cincinnati, but a real good hitter in his own right. Got to pitch him like a hitter. And it's not just that Arroyo played in Cincinnati for eight years and he's facing so many former teammates and in recent years he was the veteran presence in that Reds rotation. And he feels in the case of some of the younger Reds players alike Mike Leake here. He feels like in a sense that he raised some of these kids. He showed them how to live and survive in the big leagues. He says I've I've dressed all these guys up. I handpicked outfits for them. I put them in diapers he said. So this has got to be a strange experience for him tonight. Yeah, that's an interesting dynamic with the ball club. As we mentioned earlier, Chase Anderson has uh, taken to sitting right next to Bronson Arroyo on days he's not pitching. Good back slider. to back strikeouts. Yeah, another slider for strike three. And this was right before the ball game. A 6:40 first pitch. This is about 10 Center after six fielder, tonight. Billy Hamilton. Awkward. Yeah, it can be. And the thing is, it's not like Bronson comes out to the dugout during a ball game and says, okay, gather around, youngsters. I'm going to impart some of my knowledge from all my years in the big leagues. It's not like that at all. You just sit and you talk about what you see on the field. What do you do when Hamilton gets on base? How much attention do you pay to him? How much do you put on your catcher? Do you care if he even steals a base? Do you concentrate on the next hitter? Let him steal his bases? You know, just little things that you can pick up along the way. How do you pitch to an opposing pitcher who swings the bat well? And the, they just crop up during the course of the game very organically, very naturally. And Bronson, I would venture a guess, always has the right answer. <laughs> and now it used to be those conversations would be with Mike Leake or Homer Bailey. Now it's with, you know, Chase Anderson, somebody like that here on the D-back side, Wade Miley. One of the benefits of signing a veteran pitcher like Bronson Arroyo. Hamilton reaches down and knocks that into right field. He's got himself a two out single. That's five Reds hits in the inning. And now the show really begins. You ever go to the dog Rock track partner? Yes, I did actually. In uh, Rainham, Massachusetts. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to just go ahead and set up some track starting blocks down there for Billy Hamilton. Didn't even have an opportunity to steal a base in the ball game last night. I gotta believe he's gonna be looking to run early here. He can apply the pressure. Very aggressive on the bases. Look at the size of that lead. Brian Price, the Red Skipper, says they go from series to series. They see different defensive alignments against Hamilton. But Price said it's, it's not just because of the stolen base that Hamilton is a factor. It, it's the times to the plate of the pitchers, the lack of sometimes pitch quality by the pitchers because they're so concerned with that guy over there at first. And there he goes. The pitch out is on. And it's into center field. And Hamilton heads for third. They had a pretty good shot at him that time, but they threw it away. Good jump as usual. Boy, you see Miguel Montero coming out of the shoot. He was actually running into that throw. I think that's a play with maybe a little more experience. Chris Owings will realize we've got no chance to get him. Just make sure that ball doesn't get into center field. A stolen base E2 puts Hamilton at third. The error on Montero, and now it's a ball and a strike to skip Schumacher. Popped him up, very light sky this time of day. Chris Owings will yield to Ender and Ciarte. And that's the end of a long inning for Bonson Arroyo. 
It's 4-1 Cincinnati. Century Lake Yearling to watch next. Aaron Hill had a home run last night. Team Prado steps in against Mike Leak. A four run Cincinnati second, courtesy of Devin Mezzarocco's Grand Slam, his seventh home run of the year. So the Diamondbacks, who had a 1 0 lead, now have to start chipping away here against Leak. Prado with 271 and two homers. And he's down now, 0 2. Martin two more hits last night a single a double he scored a run he drove in a run. And he has multiple hits in three of his last four games the bat is really heating up. Bounces one over the mound Brandon Phillips. What? All the golden gloves. That dude BP. An all star and a gold glove winner at second base last year. Second the gold glove, the fourth of his career. We've become very accustomed to seeing these kind of defensive plays from Brandon Phillips. Actually, a nice play at the other end by Roger Bernardina. That throw was to the outfield side of the bag. He shifted his feet, got out there, stretched, and made a nice uh, catch at the other end. Big smiles, as always, from Brandon Phillips. Aaron Hill, a big three hit night last night, including his fifth homer. So it took Aaron uh, just under a week to retrieve the home run. It was washed off the books in that rain out last weekend at City Field in New York. 0 oh 2. Great night to be in the pool and the hot tub at the Ramtrucks.com pool area with the roof and panels open here at Chase. Hill strikes out first strike out for Mike Leak who's got a ton of rosin on the bill of that cap. A little bit on the back as well. Yeah there's nothing illegal about rosin. That's a lot though. I mean, the bag's laying right there at your feet. You really have to cover your hat with it. Six batters facing the game for Mike Leak. 302 counts already. Chris Owings. CO 275, three homers. One for four last night with a double. Yeah. 
Hey fans, anytime the D-backs score six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. A ball and two strikes. It's not easy to score runs against Mike Leake. He does not give up a lot of runs. In fact, he has not surrendered more than two runs in a game in any of his five starts this month. His run support has been dreadful. So that grand slam was certainly a welcome sight for him. Something the Reds have been very good at offensively this year. They're looking up at three teams in that central division already, but they're hitting 314 with the bases loaded this year. Two strikeouts in the inning for the former Sun Devil. He leads it 4 1 as we go to the third. Last year, we had a blast with him. What a, a terrific kid, first of all, but uh, a, a, a player that's going to be around, I believe, for 15 to 20, 20 years to come. And, and welcome back. Jay Bell, who uh, was the hitting coach at AA Mobile when Chris Owens came his way the latter half of 2012. And Jay elaborated a little bit more on Chris. He said, first of all, when he came to us, I was so impressed with his fundamentals even back then in the field and he sees him getting better all the time but also at the plate guys he said his stance looks great he's keeping it simple and he's real proud to be able to say that he helped a little bit in the development of CO but that uh, his talent is just tremendous and you heard what he had to say he's going to be around a long long time. That's right Jody you have to feel great about uh, Chris Owings if you're a D-backs fan what you've seen so far from the 22 year old and a former D-back Jay Bell BB is uh, moving up the charts hitting yeah. coach bench coach all kinds of stuff. Might be a managerial candidate soon for some ball club. I think Jay Bell would make a great manager. Obviously, uh, you, know, you always want to surround yourself with a good staff, but Jay Bell, one of those guys you could tell very early on in his playing career that he was headed in that direction. Very astute player. Has carried that right over into the coach's ranks. What is it that certain guys have that makes you say, you know what, he's probably going to be a good manager someday? And Phillips reaches down yeah, and yeah, pokes yeah, it into yeah, right yeah. center field. Lead off man aboard in the third. I think a good start is the respect of your teammates by the way you go about your business, the way you prepare for a ball game, the way you go out and compete, and uh, just by the way you go about your business, other guys realize that he's doing it the right way. I'm going to follow his lead. And then be inquisitive. You know, Jay was one of those guys, especially at the tail end of his career when I was managing, he didn't play every day. But he didn't go sit at the end of the bench and pout or sit up in the clubhouse and uh, watch the game on TV. He was always involved. Jay Bruce, Cinder and Ciarte tracks it down in the gap, and Phillips has to hustle back. And he's in there. Once again, Jay Bruce trying to go against the shift. And then Ciarte with that terrific range out there tracked it down in the gap. Third baseman, Tom Frazier. Ability for a double play there as Enciarte closed that gap very quickly. 
easily gets the ball into his throwing hand, but Aaron Hill cut the throw off. Might have been offline a little bit. Tough to tell from this angle. Now you heard Todd Frazier earlier in the pregame show talk about how, you know how do you face Arroyo? Well, step out and don't look for a fastball. So let's see what he does here. He singled his first time up, scored on the Mezzarocco Grand Slam. Well, if you step out often enough, you may get a fastball. Probably going to be in a location you can't hit, like behind you. <laughs> By a diving plow went into left. Todd Frazier, two for two. Uh, they are. Uh, Hitting Bronson pretty well here so far. He's not fooling First anybody. Baseman, Roger Bernadina. Now on your Bronson bingo, we've got to bingo. Oh yeah. Both the up and down and across. Checking your velocities. And the goal of Bronson bingo is to point out that Bronson will hit every individual number as you move up the charts on the velocity scale. Roger Bernardino, a single his first time. Well, it could be interesting because generally when Bronson gets into trouble, rather than try to throw harder, he takes even more off. So we might see those velocities creep down in the 60s even more. <laughs> more hat, foul. That's one thing that comes with uh, years and years of experience as well. Know your limitations. No when hitters are getting on your medium fastball rather than try to dial it up to 90 dial it back a little bit. And the Reds have been all over him so far already. Eight hits through two and a third and threatening more here. Roger Bernardino, longtime Washington National, split last year between the Nats and the Phillies. He was actually designated for assignment by the Reds earlier this year. He cleared waivers, but to, with injuries they've had, he's been able to hang around. Play on at second. Phillips is back. Brandon Phillips at second, Bernardina at the plate, both one time expo. Slow roller to second, Hill, Owens, Goldie, and they turn two. The Royal races a pair of Cincinnati singles and keeps it a 4 1 ball game.
Helpful Valley Honda dealers in their blue shirts. It's their job to be helpful. Friday night in downtown Phoenix. We're open for business at Chase Field. Diamondback Trailerettes 4-1. Devin Mezzarocco, a grand slam in the second inning. And it's staked to former Sun Devil Mike Leak to a 4-1 lead. Ender Inciarte will lead off the third for the D-backs. Getting the start in left in place of Cody Ross. Uh, Kirk Gibson said Cody just getting a day off here. They don't want him out there every day. At this point, coming off the hip injury, so it's a, you know kind of a two-on, one-off, one-on deal for Cody, who will get some periodic rest. And against the right-hander, a chance to get Inciarte's left hand bat in there. Chops that one over the mound. Brandon Phillips doesn't even need a glove. One away. Very flashy play from Brandon Phillips that time. Probably unnecessary. He had plenty of time. To get in CR day, but he chooses to go with the bare hand. Arroyo. Oh, nice shot right there. The Phantom Cam from Fox Sports. And now it's Leak versus Arroyo. First pitch swinging. Bronson, when he faced Mike Leak in the second inning, struck him out. And Leak is ahead here, 0 1. Mike Leake opened the season with two wins in his first three starts, including eight innings of four hit ball at St. Louis. That was back on April 9th, but he is winless in his last seven starts. And he strikes out a Royal. Winless because, well, the Reds have scored a total of just 14 runs in those seven games and lost six of them. And Leake's ERA during this seven-game winless streak is only 2-7-2. He has pitched really well. They just have not scored for him. His last three right here. Only three earned runs allowed. A.J. Pollock, a single, a stolen base, a run scored his first time. Streak of eight straight, retired by Leak. Looked like Leak left an off speed pitch up over the inside part of the plate. Right Top spin and grounder down, down there to Frazier, just didn't get the glove down far enough. Well, those ground balls have top spin. Sometimes that second bounce, it doesn't really pick up speed, but it doesn't slow down as much as you anticipate. They have posted E5 on the scoreboard here at Chase Field. TBD, Gerardo Parra. Well, we'll call it E5 for now and see if somebody changes their mind later. Chance for the Diamondbacks to pick up another run and cut this Reds lead in half. Parra grounded out his first time, 0 for 1. Up the middle. will score. The throw from Hamilton is not in time and Parra is standing on second. It's a 4-2 ball game. Big two out hit there by Gerardo Parra. A single and an RBI. Nice piece of hitting the muscle that breaking ball back up the middle of the field. And a good base running on both ends with two outs. A.J. Pollock is off with the crack of the bat. Billy Hamilton's throw goes all the way through to the plate where A.J. is going to score easily. And Gerardo Parra seeing that throw sail over the cutoff man gets himself in the scoring position for Goldie. 
Goldie and RBI ground out his first time up tonight. Chopper, slow roller. Frazier charges and throws it away. Hara comes on down. It's a one run ball game. I mentioned earlier the Reds have been one of the best defensive teams in baseball all season. Frazier uh, on the run just kind of lollipops that throw across the infield and Bernardino not such a good adjustment this time kind of leans into that throw doesn't get out there quickly enough and we'll be busting it down that line we'll see if he's uh, rewarded I got to believe that's another error on Todd Frazier for that wide throw yep E5 no RBI and now the D-backs suddenly have the tying run and scoring position for Miguel Montero. Get him in the arm or the bat. Nothing from Harry Cedarstrom. Must have hit the bat. Maybe kind of checked his swing. That pitch might have tucked underneath his arm and caught the barrel of the bat behind him. We'll take one more look here. A ball and a strike. Montero on base three times in Wednesday's win over the Padres. Had a base on balls, a pair of singles, and scored twice. Now at 260 on the year. Well, you got to face the field. If you're <laughs> fundamentals. He's waiting to play the carom off the back wall out there at the RamTrucks.com pool area. It's got a scouting report. Yeah. Well, it's a hitter's count for Miggy at two and one. Nice crowd out there. Birthday boys waiting for his homer. Three balls and one strike. Well, one thing Mike Leake, I'm sure, learned from Bronson Royo was pick your battles. He's got a base open at first right here, facing a tough left-handed hitter, right-handed hitting Martin Prado in the on-deck circle. Well, it doesn't look like he wants to give Miggy too much to hit right here. Right back to the mound. Leake snares it and throws him out. But the Diamondbacks get two and through three they trail the Reds four three. The Arizona Diamondbacks would like to thank all fans and attendees to not more support. And a special welcome to all groups here tonight. Including the folks out at the Bantrucks.com pool.
Some runs for Bronson Arroyo. It's now a 4 3 ball game as we start the fourth. And Devin Mezzarocco, who has driven in all four Cincinnati runs, will lead it off. A grand slam in the second. Bruce Frazier Bernardino opened up that inning with singles, and then Mezzarocco launched one into the left field seats. This is a guy, Mezzarocco, who is usually down there somewhere around seventh in the batting order. That's where he is tonight. He has become a middle of the lineup bat for Cincinnati when needed. Not under this one, hits it high to left center field. A.J. Pollock at the track in his room, and that's allowed at number one. Fans, FoxSportsArizona.com, all your online local sports Short coverage stop. you need. You get post-game analysis from Jack Magruder, reaction from the D-backs clubhouse, and Craig Morgan examines the one-year suspension for Cardinals linebacker Daryl Washington. We got some bad news there. All that and more, FoxSportsArizona.com. Ramon Santiago, shortstop, looks at strike one. He struck out looking his first time. So Zach Cozart in there last night. This is a Santiago's sixth start at shortstop this year. He's a guy that can play short, can play third, some second. 34-year-old veteran infielder, his 13th big league season. Limited at bats for Santiago against Arroyo, but he was two for three coming in tonight. Zach Cozart being a teammate of Bronson's that never faced him. Chopper back to the mound. Arroyo spins and throws him out. Two down. A look inside the ABC club at Chase Field. Great view, great food. Nice night to be there. Oh, go to the ballpark and you get to eat off the tablecloth. That's it's nice. Like classy, huh? Uh -huh. Class up. The, we could use some tablecloths in here. <laughs> we certainly need something to class this place up. Mike Leak, a strikeout victim his first time. Well, the Reds have at least one hit in every inning against Arroyo, so a one, two, three, fourth would be welcome news. There's some smirks exchanged between the hitter and the pitcher here, old friends, after that foul ball. Mike Leak does have a home run this year. One and two. And Mike Leak was a guy that Dusty Baker used as a pinch hitter. He used him as a pinch runner when he got jammed up occasionally and had a short bench. He was a really good athlete. Mike Leak, 26 years old, turns 27 in November. And he's up there battling. the strikeout. That's his third. We head to the home half of the fourth. It's a one-run ball game.
start. Just, I said, just take it easy, make good quality pitches down in the zone early. But then if you want to try and reach back and get a little more, you can do that with two strikes. And so that's something I tried to take into my bullpen and then out here today was just get ahead. And it was uh, fortunate enough that they were able to give me some first pitch outs. And so that really helped keep the pitch count down. Well, and good advice from pitching coach Mike Harkey to Josh Colmenter last night. So efficient. Gave up three hits, but with three double plays behind to face the minimum last night. Talked about, you know, really taking advantage a little bit of the Reds' aggressiveness last night. And over there in the Reds' clubhouse, very disappointed. They actually had a players-only meeting after the game. Jay Bell told me he went out to give out today's lineup, and I could tell the players were talking. And so uh, the Reds looking for offense, but Cole Mentor so efficient. Uh, with some words from Mike Harkey. The other thing, guys, that was funny, uh, besides, of course, the double bubble hat on his head, which I have no problem interviewing the guys with that on their head at the time, but watching it run back today, it is hard to take him seriously talking about uh, actually pitching with the, with the hat on. But uh, uh, today, it, Mike Harkey was actually coaching Josh up at the plate last night, too, which was interesting. Uh, wanted him to get a hit. He was, that was about the only thing he was disappointed in from Josh Colmenter last night. Well, not much to not like, Jody, about Josh's start last night. He was absolutely terrific. 94 pitches, 65 for strikes, retired the final 11 he first. Prado laces that right to Schumacher and left. One away. Well, even though that at bat results in an out for Martin Prado, you can't be too disappointed. Got a good pitch to hit and smoked it into left field right at Schumacher. One away, here's Aaron Hill who struck out his first time. And Martin Prado talked about this with reporters the other day, and Brad Ziegler actually mentioned it to me when we were filming a cup of coffee episode earlier this week. The level of confidence that Aaron Hill provides for the Diamondbacks pitchers when he is out there at second base. And Prado said Aaron just brings a lot of confidence to the pitcher. And Ziegler talked about turning behind him and seeing Aaron Hill make some just absolutely ridiculous stops on balls that Brad was sure were going to get into the outfield for hits. What's that feeling of, okay, he's back there behind me. I'm, I'm going to be okay. On the ground is short, right to Santiago. Two outs in the fourth. And for Aaron Hill, we've talked a lot about Bronson Arroyo and his veteran presence and what he's learned in this game. And for Aaron Hill, a lot of it is positioning. We saw him twice last night on Todd Frazier. Cheat several steps up the middle of the field in perfect fielding position when the ball was put into play. Always give yourself a little bit of an advantage. Chris Owings struck out his first time. We have a scoring change as uh, we kind of had a feeling we might. That A.J. Pollock at bat in the third inning fans, if you're scoring at home, change that from the E5 to a double for Pollock. And so they take the error away from Frazier and give Pollock credit for the double. So A.J. now two for two. And they take him out of the leadoff spot at this point. We may have picketers outside <laughs> Chase Field. Owings reaches down and lifts it into right. Easy play for Bruce. We are through four, a one run ball game.
It's Baxter's birthday, so be here for the d Reds on Sunday, June 1st. Help them celebrate first 5,000 kids in attendance. Get this Baxter Ears baseball cap. It's courtesy of Smile Generation and Every Kid's Dentist. Visit d slash the tickets today, and it, we, it was kind of funny, Bob, just totally impromptu deal here. Baxter, of course, uh, it's his birthday. So we're going to have a party for him, personally Ooh. delivering an invitation to Ralph Kelso, wow. president of the D-Backs uh, Baxter fan club. How big is that? Now, Ralph, uh, you know, take care of that up there. I know you got to you got to work the rest of the night, but don't spill anything on that. And there is Baxter. Ralph, put it in a safe place. Corners in at third and first for Billy Hamilton, who has a grounded out in single. Does have a stolen base in the ball game. You know, partner, other than the children here at the ballpark tonight, I think Ralphie's the only one that speaks D. Baxter. He understands everything D. Baxter says and does. Well, that's how you get to be president of the fan yeah. club. Did, did you understand Baxter, I've been Ralph? trained to uh, speak Baxter, that's right. I guess it's a lot of sign language. Yes. Ralph, just promise me that the invitation is in a safe place right now. I, I am going to frame it and put it up in my hobby room. <laughs> you know what? I don't believe him. Ralphie, what else do you have hanging in your hobby room? Great question. Many things. Billy Hamilton slaps it into left. Easy play for NCRT. One away in the first. So five in a row set down by Bronson Arroyo. You can go in and get uh, all kinds of things in the team shop here at Chase Field. There is in there a Greg Schulte scorebook, by the way. You can get the official Gubna approved edition of a scorebook to score the Diamondback games. One of the many items for sale at the team shop. We're number one. Skip Schumacher, a single and a flyout. He's one for two. Never too early to get your Christmas shopping out of the way. Beat the rush. This one hop to Owings at short, got a hurry, and he throws him out. In fact, here is a shot of uh, the official Arizona Diamondbacks scorebook. That is Gubna approved. That is sweet. That's big, yeah. big time. So when you're watching the games or listening on 98.7 FM to the Gubna, actually the Gubna, well, well, I don't want to say short-handed tonight. Tom Candiotti is a well, he's got another night off. And so uh, Gonzo filling in on the radio side tonight. Gonzo not used to pinch hitting. Although when he had his consecutive game streak going, there were a few times I had to promise him a pinch hit it back to him to take a day off. Moldy has room at the railing. So Bronson Arroyo has done a nice job of settling in. It's still a one-run ball game. CenturyLink early to what's next so far. A.J. Pollock, two for two. He'll be coming up.
And Duran Ciarte leads off the D-backs fifth inning against Mike Lee. Bronson Arroyo has settled in. He's retired seven in a row after that a rough start. And we've got a good one going here. Chase 4-3. Bernadina. So far so good over there for the shark. He's never been over there at first base before. This is a, a new area for him. No problems as it gets. It's probably a big adjustment for Roger Bernadina just to get used to that first baseman's mitt rather than that long outfielder's glove he uh, normally uses. He doesn't look super comfortable. Yeah, that look at the size of that thing. It's like a hockey goalie. One and one. You've seen a fair amount, almost to 50 at bats of Ender and CRT. Your thoughts? Well, I think like a lot of guys that have great speed, uh, I like to see him stay out of the air a little bit more. To alter his swing to hit the top half of the baseball, put it on play in the ground, and take your chances. We say that about a lot of those guys with great speed. Tony Campana kind of falls into that same category, but uh, you love the speed, you love the defense, you love the throwing arm. You just like to see a little more contact on the ground. He's got a full count here, three and two, to open up the fifth. Ender had his first career RBIs in Wednesday's eight run first against the Padres. Rips that one down the right field line, and that is a fair ball. Ender in Ciarte. And that is his first extra base hit in the big leagues. A nice clean play by Jay Bruce out in right field as in Ciarte ropes that ball down the right field line. Any mishandling of this ball making the exchange from the glove into the throwing hand. Throw back to the infield offline at all and Inciarte probably ends up at third but that'll be Bronson Arroyo's job here in his at bat to move Inciarte up 90 feet. He is the tying run in scoring position with no outs and Bernadina at first Frazier at third coming in here with Arroyo up. And the Reds outfielders all cheating in as well. And they throw it into center. I mentioned that Hamilton was playing very shallow, so he's able to back that up. And NCR Day, despite the great speed, has to stay put. I always had the feeling that was a pre designed play that the Reds were going to try a pickoff before they delivered a pitch to home plate because Hamilton, as you mentioned, was playing shallow and coming in before that ball was even thrown away at second base. Once that foul. Yeah, Billy Hamilton is uh, really, really shallow. With his speed, you know, he can go back on a ball and cover a lot of ground. It's not like the Royals going to get a 400 foot shot to center, but uh, he is really close. Bernadina has set up camp almost halfway between the first base bag and home plate. Tough bunt situation. Bernadina drawn in. Mike Leak's a real good defender out there on the mound. Up the first base line. Might have let that one roll foul. Enciarte is at third. Good job by Arroyo. That ball was hit pretty hard and had a good chance to go foul, but to mission accomplished. And, uh, Bernardino could have turned around and chased this ball down the first baseline. Looked like it was headed for foul territory, but uh, axiom is if they're going to give you an out, take an out. Even though if it moves a runner up to third base with one out in the inning. For the red hot A.J. Pollock. Reds infielders on the edge of the grass. Strike one. A.J. a single, a stolen base, and a run scored in the first. He's been credited now with a double in the third. He also scored a run, so he scored twice from the leadoff spot today.
and counting tonight now with 10 hits in his last five games six of them for extra bases. Well, certainly the confidence level is through the roof right now for A.J. Pollock but his timing has really been good. A.J. has a little bit of a leg kick with that front leg. Sometimes the timing can be off just a little bit but lately it has been absolutely perfect. And able to hold off on that one of all in two strikes. Kirk Gibson asked again today is it's amazing how people want definitive answers to these questions but he was asked is A.J. Pollock the leadoff man and Gibby kind of went eh, not yet. He is today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everybody's always after clarity. Who's going to be your cleanup guy who's hitting in the leadoff spot who's the closer. Must be fun. Oh it's tremendous fun. <laughs> To not only answer all those questions before the game, but then to go in 15 minutes after the ball game's over and answer them again after the game. One and two. A little number back to the mound. Luciarte has to stay put. They throw Pollock out, two down. Fans, that's on again. Tweet us your fan photo using the hashtag AZ fan photo for your chance to have it shown in the game broadcast brought to you by at and Well the time run is 90 feet away with two outs for Gerardo Parra. Parra at RBI single he scored a run his last time up one for two. Mezzarocco and Leak at the mound. With Leak at 60 pitches 43 for strikes. Ciarte a double down the right field line to lead off this inning, representing the tying run. But now the Diamondbacks are down to the last chance here in the inning for Ron O'Para. Ball one. Strikeouts have been adding up a bit lately for Gerardo. 16 in his last 16 games. And he has had at least one strikeout in five straight now. There's the strike, one and one. Hear it all the time, Bob. The two strike approach. We shorten everything up. Try to eliminate any wasted movement whatsoever. Try to pick up that ball as quickly as possible. Let it get deep in the zone so you can determine whether it's going to be a ball or a strike and then swing quickly. Hey fans, when the D backs win, you win at Papa John's. A day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACKS50 at PapaJohns.com. Also, okay. mentally, you think more up the middle of the field, gap to gap. You don't want to be out too far out in front of anything. You don't want to be too far behind anything. And usually, if you concentrate on hitting the ball from right center to left center, you'll stay on the pitch a little bit better. Even now with two balls and two strikes with Ender and Ciarte at third. John Frazier. A leadoff double by Inciarte goes for naught and through five the Diamondbacks trail the Reds 4-3.
game against Bronson? Uh, step out a couple of times. I know he likes to rush, rush his pitches a little bit. Uh, you know, understand you're not going to get that fastball a lot. And, you know, just try to drive the ball. It's, it's tough to face a pitcher when you're used to 94, 95, and a guy can throw 74 to 88. Well, and there you have it from Todd Frazier. You guys referred to that soundbite from the pregame show. But, yeah, Todd Frazier already with two singles against Arroyo. So he's winning the mental game right now, but Arroyo has really settled down. And this is an interesting quote, guys, from him to John Fay of the Cincinnati Enquirer about tonight's start. I think I'm going to put all zeros on the board or give up a nine spot. I don't think it's going to be anything in between. Well, again, settling down after that grand slam, that's what Bronson, I imagine, Bob is doing right now, is just trying to refocus and get this thing within reach because, obviously, the D-backs are within one. Jay Bruce lifts that high into the air, shallow center. The shift was on, so a run over there for Pollock. And Arroyo has uh, done a nice job here, BB, of settling in. That is eight straight. He has retired. Yeah, you really just have to let that four run second inning go and realize that the way the Diamondbacks' offense has been firing lately, uh, if you can just stop them right there, Third hold them at four, the give your Frazier. team a chance to get back in this game, and that's. What Bronson has done since that second inning. And so we'll see if Frazier steps in and steps out. A pair of singles so far. Attacks the first pitch. Showing one. How's Bronson Bingo doing? Wow. Uh, bingo a couple of times here. Hitting every pitch speed on the charts. The 90 and the over 90, I think, are at risk tonight. <laughs> Bronson doesn't seem to have that sneaky fastball. Occasionally, he will sneak one up there at 90 miles per hour. Especially when he's trying to dot that outside corner on a right-handed hitter. The amazing thing about Bronson Bingo, and you pointed this out throughout the year, is guys will throw a fastball, say, you know, usually 92 or 93 every time. But he will hit every individual number up the radar gun. On the dot, 71, 72, 73. There's one of those sneaky fastballs. Occasionally, Arroyo will really get up on top, throw almost directly overhand, trying to hit that outside corner. Kind of jumps at the hitter a little bit, misses down that time, which, if you're going to miss, miss in your favor. And he misses there. Ends the streak of eight in a row set down by Arroyo. Now it's 75 pitches. And 49 for strikes. Bronson pulled the plug after 75 his last First time out against the Mets. And he's very cognizant of what his body is doing. He said from time to time his body doesn't want to go anymore. And he's got to drag it out there with him. And there are times when the shoulder is beat up, the elbow hurts, the back is barking. But he has made a, every start in 19 years. And people think you feel good all the time. Well, uh, he says you don't. Truth is you don't feel good most of the time. And you do have to kind of find a way to get through it. That's another thing you learn with experience in this game as well. You, you love those guys who have the attitude of give me the ball and get out of the way. I'm going to finish what I start. But eh, with time and more reps and more games started at the major league level, you realize your job is to help your team win games. And if you're out of gas and making bad pitches, you're not giving your team a chance to win that ball game. And Bronson Royal recognized that at City Field. Mentioned it to Mike Harkey, his pitching coach, and the manager Kirk Gibson. They got him out of there, and the bullpen cleaned up the last three innings of that ball game. And he is now just past the point at which he decided it was time to call it quits. His last start. One and two now to Roger Bernardino. He has singled and scored a run. Bronson has uh, pitched very well lately over his last six starts. Three and one, a 1 9 0 ERA. But coming off a loss and a no decision. And he's trailing 4 3 here in the sixth. He was beaten by the Cardinals two starts ago at Bush Stadium. Five runs on nine hits, went seven. But that was a 4 3 D backs loss. His Previous start, as we mentioned, last Sunday at City Field. No decision despite uh, pitching pretty well. Six uh, innings, six hits, gave up just one run. One and two on Bernardino. 
This is well hit to center field. A.J. Pollock looking up, and that ball is off the wall. Frazier coming in. Goldie cuts it off, and now it's a 5-3 Reds lead. Bernadina gave that one a ride. Pretty good read by AJ out there in center field to realize he wasn't going to be able to get back quickly enough to make the play, so he retreats away from the wall to play the carom. Unfortunately, his throw back to the infield missed both cutoff men. I think they may have had a shot at Frazier at the plate on that one, but the ball got away from both Aaron Hill and Chris Owings, allowing Frazier to score. Oh, eight straight set down by Arroyo, but a one out walk and now a double has made it a 5 3 Reds lead. And here's Devin Mezzarocco who hit the grand slam back in the second. <laughs> Bernadina takes off for third and he is out. Miguel Montero fires a strike to Prado. And they've got the shark for the second out. And Brian Price, the Reds manager, is going to come out and talk it over. Maybe he didn't have time to get to his feet. He just snaps the throw down there from his knees. Mark Ripperger, the third base umpire, emphatically signaling out there at third base. They got him. Yeah, yeah he's out. A look on Fox's Phantom Cam. Good throw, good quick tag by Martin Prado. Well, so many times that'll make the difference in the play. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of a second between safe and out there on that play at third base, and the ability of Martin Prado to get that tag down quickly might have made the difference in that play. Very quick release from Miggy on that one. And a great look at the play from our Fox Phantom Cam, and we're lucky to have it here with us all week long. Been getting some great shots courtesy of our friends at Fox Sports. And that's the inning, but the Reds get one more, and they lead it 5-3. Lone Butte Casino, you're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Cox Communications, bundle and save with Cox. Downtown Phoenix, Chase Field, Friday Night Baseball, presented by your helpful Valley Honda dealer. As Paul Goldschmidt leads off the sixth against Mike Leak, it's a 5-3 Cincinnati lead. 
Goldie, Miggy, and Martin Prado, three, four, and five in the Arizona sixth. Goldie came into the game tonight, still leading the National League in hits. He was uh, one ahead of David Wright of the Mets. And tied with the Phillies' Chase Utley for the Major League lead in doubles. Two and one. A little more patient at bat this time from Goldie. Saw two pitches his first time around tonight when he grounded out to short to drive home A.J. Pollock and then reached on an E5 on the first pitch he saw in his second at bat. Yeah, Goldie's slugging up from the first month of the season. More homers and RBIs guys than he had during the start in March and April. In fact, the slugging percentage in May for Paul is up about 70 points, and he's now top 10 in the league in slugging percentage. He's missing more of those, as you mentioned the other day, than he has in the past. Reaches down and shoots that down the right field line, but out of play. And Counting on it is our Golden Glover down there. Cindy Bonin Country. And there's Rick Roberson waiting for his chance. It's full three and two. That one is throw in the center, a base hit for Goldie. Lead off man aboard in the sixth. Well, before the Diamondbacks score a couple runs, let's take a look at our course bank with timeless moments. This actually uh, spread over a couple of days. The game actually started on the 29th of May, but the Diamondbacks beat the Giants at AT&T Park on a Rubio Durazo's RBI double in the 18th inning. Did you make it through that okay? Oh, barely. <laughs> 17 innings of goose eggs. Gonzo went one for seven in that ball game. Jay Bell, two for eight. <laughs> That's the way everybody looked in the 18th inning. Miguel Montero! What a play right there by Santiago at short. Taking what might have been extra bases away from Miggy. Going upstairs, top shelf. Third baseman. We talked about it with Prado back in the fourth inning. His leadoff line drive to skip Schumacher in left field. Don't change a thing. That's a great approach. Stayed right on that ball. Hit a hard line drive that was possibly ticketed for the gap in left center, but. Santiago positioned perfectly to snare that line drive. That's got it drive. Oh, nice. it does. It does. I mean, you can only hear hang with them so many times. Stay right there. You're okay. You're okay. Martin Prado 0 for 2. He has hit safely in five straight games and eight of his last nine. Martin, nine RBIs in his last nine games, and he is being much more aggressive at the plate right now. And it's shown up here in the last few weeks. He had an interesting comment I read today, Bob, Martin Prado, talking about what he's doing now that he wasn't doing earlier this year is trusting his hands. What does that mean? You know, sometimes, especially when you're struggling, you feel like you're tardy on pitches you should hit. So you don't trust that you can stay back and let that ball travel and just be quick with your hands. You, you get your legs involved. You get your upper body involved. Your swing gets longer. And that just compounds the problem. Trusting your hands basically just means I can wait on the pitch as long as I need to and still get the barrel on the ball. Have that kind of confidence in your hands, in your quickness of your swing. Back with you tomorrow. Don't forget a little later start than we're used to on Saturdays. It's a 7 10 start. Pre game show, Diamondbacks Live, comes with a 6 30 on Fox Sports Arizona. And just a couple other quick notes from that uh, 18 inning ball game in San Francisco. One of the better career starts for Armando Reynoso went six innings, gave up three hits, shut out baseball. Miguel Batista came in. Pitched four innings of relief to get the win. 
Barry Bonds went 0 for 5 with three intentional walks. You walked him three times? We'd have walked him eight times if they <laughs> called for it. I mean, that was that was that time in Barry's career where it didn't matter whether it was Jeff Kent or Benito Santiago or anybody. Take your pick. You weren't going to pitch to Barry if you didn't have to. If there was a base open, and it could have been third base, runners at first and second. <laughs> Put him on. Well, that's what they always said when he was on that run. Like he would, when you did pitch to him, he would go almost the entire at bat and not see a pitch. But there would always be one pitch in every at bat where he had a shot, and he would always hit that one pitch. And, and rarely, if ever, missed it. So just don't give him the chance. That's good managing in my book. <laughs> two and two. It's full. Looking at the box score from that game, uh, Troy Brohan, a third of an inning. I don't even have to go back and look. I guarantee you he came in and got Barry out. <laughs> that was his guy. He owned it. Four three ball count in the game for Mike Leake, his second in this half inning. Goldie on the run, the throw from Mezzarocco. Is irrelevant. It's ball four. So we've got first and second, one outs. Two on, one away for Aaron Hill. Uh, yeah. Brandon Phillips tried to decoy Goldie down there. There's a walk at home plate, so there is no play at second. <laughs> he's trying to tell Goldie he's got to go back to first, hoping he'll step off that bag long enough to be tagged out. I think Goldie just gave him a nice try. Nice try. This is my first rodeo. 80 pitches for Leak, 54 for strikes. And Aaron Hill finds a gap. That ball gets down. Here comes Goldie. And he will tie the game. Oh, oh, pardon me, 5 4. And the tie run is now at third. Two singles and a walk in the inning. And the Diamond Bats with a great chance to tie this thing up. Jeff Pico to the mound. Looks like he might have mishit that ball just a little bit off the bat. It looked like a sure gap splitting double. Schumacher, however, gets over there and cuts it off and hustles that ball back into second base to hold Aaron Hill to a single and hold Martin Prado at third base on the play. Goldie scores easily on that drive into the gap. Zyre infield is at the mound, and now Gary Cedarstrom will join him out there. It's a big difference. It, 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 we talked about last night about Ludwig playing left. If it's Ludwig, I don't think he gets over there and cuts that off, and Prado does score. Sure. Sure. Probably not. Yeah, he hit it out to the end of the bat just a little bit. Took some of the sting out of that line drive that looked like it was headed all the way to the wall in left center, but got out there and died just enough for Shoemaker to come over and cut it off. Reds bullpen. Sam LeCure is warming the right hander. Martin Prado, the runner at third. He's the tying run. Aaron Hill, the go ahead run at first. One out for Chris Owings, who is 0 for 2. Said it many times in this situation throughout the early part of this season. I'm a big fan of the hit and run. One out, runners on the corners. The worst thing that can happen is a double play ball. To avoid that, start the runner. Chris Owens puts the ball in play. It should result in a run. You got a guy up there with a nice, short, quick stroke. A ball and a strike. He's dropped it in there on him. One and two.
Sanderson Ford bullpen the left hander Oliver Perez. Two down in the sixth. Steady diet of breaking Left balls fielder. there. The 1 0 curve ball to get back in the count. And two hard sliders just off of that outside corner to get two swinging strikes to end the at bat. Looking down into that Sanderson four bullpen. Well, it's up to Ender in Ciarte here. He doubled his last time up. on base it was the tying run with nobody out and they couldn't get the tying run in another chance here in the sixth pitcher spot is due up next Eric Chavez in the on deck circle Get these runs home before the Reds can go to some of their horses in that bullpen. Broxton, Chapman. These guys are tough to beat when they have a lead. And with the league nearing 90 pitches, uh, this is the time to strike. I'm surprised Brian Price doesn't have a lefty up for Eric Chavez. Got three left handers in his bullpen Manny Parra, Sean Marshall, and Aroldis Chapman, the closer. I mean, you look at the bench players available for the Diamondbacks tonight, and Eric Chavez is the guy that jumps out. He's the one guy you, you'd really like to be careful with if he gets an at bat in the game. And with that in mind, uh, you would think the Reds would have one of their lefties warming. Strike two. Well, we've seen Mike Leak do that a number of times today. Just drop that little breaking ball in there for a strike at the bottom of the zone. Ciarte even two balls and two strikes. Pitch number ninety coming up. Phillips's ball on second base and it makes a tremendous play to throw out Enciarte. It was by Bernadina at first. Phillips from the right field grass spins and throws, and here comes Kirk Gibson. Now this will be a critical call in the ballgame. I think he might be safe. Boy, by the narrowest of margins. Clear and convincing evidence that he's safe. That's what they need. And they might have it. Kerwin Danley, the first base umpire. Oh, what a huge leap of faith that time for Brandon Phillips. Fielded that ball, had his back to the bag at first, just wheeled around and threw it where he thought Mike Leak was going to be. Challenge is on. They are challenging the call. And if he is safe at first and the call is overturned it's a tie game. Ladies We've got Gary Searstrom the crew chief coming in from home plate. Kerwin Danley the umpire involved in the game. On the headsets as well. 
The rule on the field is that the batter was out at first base. Can't get any closer than that. I think the previous frame right there with our terrific Fox equipment here gives you a pretty definitive look at it. And the uh, fans of the ballpark have just seen the replay on the DVTV screen. And I think he's hit. Look at those plays with biased eyes, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think there was convincing enough evidence on that one. That's about as close as a play can possibly be. Both guys with their foot coming down, they're going to hold the call. The ball stands, which means there was no clear and convincing evidence that NCRTA was safe. So, call stands, and that's the inning. But the Diamondbacks get one through six, they trail it 5 4. My Cox Communications and Fries Food Stores is ready to take you to a D-backs game. Just stop by this month's participating Cox Solution Store in Mesa, and you can enter to win two seats on the Fan Express bus. You get round-trip transportation to the D-backs game on June 22nd. For more information, visit FoxSportsArizona.com. June 22nd will be a good day to be out here. That's a Sunday 1-10 start against the San Francisco Giants. As Ramon Santiago fouls off the first pitch here in the center. Pitcher spot is due up next. And big Donald Lutz is in the on deck circle for Cincinnati. So this looks like it'll be it for Mike Leake. Santiago gets the bunt down. Aaron Hill charges underhand flip to Goldie. For the first out in the seventh, hold on. What is uh, Gary Cedarstrom signaling? Is he out of the box? I think he's out of the batter's box. Here comes Brian Price. He stepped on home plate. Oh, yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Way over. Occasionally a hitter will step behind home plate to get an angle and try to move that ball to the right side of the field. That time Santiago stepped out in front of home plate, but clearly crossed that line on the inside of the batter's box, stepping all the way out in front of the plate. Mike Harkey to the mound. Bronson Arroyo at uh, 86 pitches, 56 for strikes. Uh, 
hundred percent sure of this, but I believe that's just two unassisted. You, you give the put out to the closest defender. That would be Miguel Montero. Pinch hitting for Mike Donald Lee, Lutz, 63250. The first ever German developed player in the major leagues. He was born in Watertown, New York, but moved to Germany when he was just about a year old. Ended up playing for the German national baseball team all over Europe. Red signed him back in 2007. And he will hit for Mike Leake. So Santiago out on the illegal batted ball, and that is two unassisted if you're scoring. And ball one to Donald Lutz. Spent most of this year with Double A Pensacola, the Blue Wahoos in the Southern League, and hit 360 there. Had six home runs in 23 games. Lutz did get a taste of the big leagues last year with the Reds, only 34 games. Hit 241 with a homer. Swings through that one, it's two and two. And he hit a big home run on Mother's Day against the Brewers. Went back to the minor leagues at the end of June, wasn't getting enough at bats, and played the second half of last year in double A. He's a guy they like. Three and two. High fly ball, shallow left field. Chris Owens falls off in Seattle, and that's the second out in the seventh. Hey fans, we invite you to play Kachinko by signing up at one of the 16 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season home game. Well, once again, the Diamondbacks have done a good job neutralizing Billy Hamilton's speed. He does have a stolen base, but to, for the most part, they have kept him off the bases. One for three, a single in the second. And the infield uh, is in on the corners. For the fastest man in baseball, Billy Hamilton. He's 23 years old. This is a guy when he was growing up in Taylorsville, Mississippi, said he ran everywhere, never played video games, just loved to get out and run around. He was heavily recruited to play football at Mississippi State by Coach Dan Mullen. He was a receiver and a punt returner. He was a sensational basketball player and a 50 point game to his credit. But uh, chose baseball when the Reds took him in the second round of the 09 draft out of high school. Taylorsville, Mississippi, about 2,000 people. And he is a natural right hand hitter, but the Reds have made him switch it to get him closer to first base and utilize that speed. It's full three and two. Popped up, should be playable. Montero. Stretch time at Chase Field. CenturyLink, your link to watch next. Coming up for the Diamondbacks. Picture spot, A.J. Pollock and then Gerardo Parra. Joe Borowski joins us next.
Back at Chase Field, D-backs trail the Reds. 5-4, home half of the seventh. Sam Lecure, the new pitcher for Cincinnati after they hit for Mike Leak. Sam Lecure, his 20th appearance of the year, an excellent 1-2-9 ERA. And joining us up in the booth is Joe Borowski. Joe, did you bring your Bronson bingo card? I did. I was trying to score, score it, and uh, I'm not sure if, if, if we got to Bronson Bingo in. Well, we can tell you as we check the Bronson Bingo card that Bronson hit every uh, velocity number between 69 and 87, nothing above or below. Nice. Full range. Didn't quite so, get so up there, 89, 90, but yeah. Yeah, so if you had it, I, I'll take that as a winner, I guess. Bingo. Eric Chavez will hit for Arroyo. Ten hits in his last 29 at bats, Chavez, including a pair of homers. So it's Chavez, Pollock, Para, 9 1 and 2 here in the seventh, trailing 5 4. Eric this season, 3 for 20 with a home run as a pinch hitter. You know, Joe, I was kind of wondering out loud why uh, Brian Price didn't have a lefty up when Chavez was in the on deck circle in that last uh, inning, but. You look at the number Sam LaCure has held lefties to a 143 average. So Just the skipper like feels lefty, perfectly yeah. content sending a righty out there against the left hand hitting Chavez. And he has not allowed a run in any of his last four appearances. A ball and a strike. That's Sam LaCure's signature pitch right there. That real short, quick curveball. Throws a fastball and a changeup as well, but that curveball is his go to pitch. Joe Bronson Arroyo after that second inning did a pretty good job of settling in. He at one point retired eight straight gave up only three base hits after the second. And the funny thing is going into this game you wondered who what adjustments each team would make. They know Bronson very well having, having played with him for so long and he knows them having watched him. And the one thing that stood out to me in that second inning was they scored their four runs and four hitters on seven pitches. Mm -hmm. They jumped on him early. They didn't wait for him to, to get ahead of him. It almost seemed like their attack in that second inning was, hey, we're going to jump on first pitch we see and, and, and live with it. And seven pitches, they had their four runs. Yeah, they were up there swimming. The, the grand slam to Mezzarocco was just a curveball that spun sure. up there on the inside part of the plate. Didn't really take the break the way Bronson wanted it to. And of course, Devin Mezzarocco has been behind the plate catching deliveries from Bronson Arroyo. So I had a pretty good idea what he was looking for and got it and didn't miss it. Top of the order, A.J. Pollock. He is two for three, a single, a double. He has scored twice. And Bob, you say, you know. He's, he's caught him so he kind of knows his, maybe his pitch patterns or whatever because most times as a hitter if, if you have bases loaded you're looking for a certain pitch from somebody and if you don't get it you're going to take it so he had to have seen that curveball spin he knew he's looking for it because he did not miss it that's in there for a strike one and one Well, Arroyo's night is over. Evan Marshall warming up in the Sanderson Ford bullpen. All right down the line. That's a fair ball. A.J. Pollock is at it again. His second double tonight is 15th on the year. Another three hit night for the D backs leadoff man. He's just recognizing pitches so good right now. Saw that breaking ball. He has to stay back just enough to keep it fair down that left field line. Here's our Phantom Cam and our Exmo here from Fox. A.J. Pollock 11 hits in his last five games seven of those hits for extra bases. Ronald Parra. Tying run at second one out. On a 
short right to Santiago. Two down. Time for our AT&T fan photo. Well, Kelso this time, a guest member of the Brentley Committee. Helping picking out to tonight's photo, and here is the winner. It's Andrew, of course, Ralph, uh, president of the Baxter Fan Club, and getting ready for Sunday's big Baxter birthday party. Gave a like thumbs that up photo. to that one. Nice work, Ralph. I like it. All right, take five. <laughs> Everybody wants to be a director, Mitch Reagan. Now, once again, the Diamondbacks with the Tying run in scoring position and two outs. They have yet to been able to deliver that run so far, but a chance here for Goldie if he gets something to hit. So what's your take on uh, the does Goldie need a day off debate? I understand you want to pick and choose your spots, especially with with somebody who's going to play as many games he is during the season. And I think if he's a good judge of, of when that time might be, but it, it, it's so tough to take him out of the lineup. I, I understand. I understand the problems with that. And, and, and you know, he's not going to cooperate. Either. Sure. He, he wants to be in there every game. It's just so tough as 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 a manager to take out the one guy who who you know can do what he does it's so such a tough but er, you're better off early on in the season so that that he doesn't run down later on but Gibby, Gibby's done a pretty good job of, of, of spelling him here and there and Gibby says Goldie will often give him the don't even think about it <laughs> discussion anytime the subject even comes up well, the thing is even Paul Goldschmidt at less than a hundred percent even when he is swinging at the occasional bad pitch low and away if you make a mistake he can hit it 470 feet <laughs> two balls and two strikes just behind Dave McKay at first everybody and backs have had the time run aboard in the fifth and the sixth and now the seventh Sneaking in behind A.J. Pollock at second. <laughs> Called strike three. <laughs> Joe, we'll see you on Diamondback Live after the ball game. All right, guys. We head to the eighth.
Breaking moments on MLB Whip Around. Weeknights at 7 Pacific on Fox Sports 1. And streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Outside Chase Field where we go to the eighth inning. It's a one-run ball game. The Reds and the Diamondbacks. Backs another chance to get that tying run across. But just... Couldn't get that big hit, and now they'll turn it over to the reliever, the rookie at seven, Marshall. My partner, we were talking about Goldie and the possibility of taking a day off. When do you pull the trigger on that? On this day in baseball history, back in 1982, Cal Ripken started his streak of 2,632 consecutive games. Let me put that into perspective. For you. Hunter Pence has the longest active streak in the majors right now at 361. He'd have to play and not miss a game until the year 2028 to tie the record. And ride a lot of scooters in between now and then. Yeah. I'm guessing the record is safe. Eventually, the streak just becomes something that's done for its own sake, and I don't think there's any question that it. Cost Ripken some numbers and maybe the Orioles some wins as a result over the course of that long stretch. Mm -hmm. I touched on it briefly earlier with Luis Gonzalez had an active game streak at the time when I was managing and uh, it was tough to get him out of the lineup as well. I had to promise him that I would get him in there as a pinch runner, a pinch hitter, a defensive replacement. We'll make sure you get credit for a game played, but I think you need a day off. And he would grudgingly agree. Well, he never really agreed, but. He would sit on the bench next to me. Make your life miserable until he got in there. <laughs> Who's next door doing it to the governor tonight? And he's well. It's another uh, pinch hit for Gonzo in there for Tom Candiotti mm -hmm. tonight on the radio side, 98.7 FM. Oh and two to skip Schumacher. Skip Schumacher, they like his uh, fire, his spark. This is a guy that got ejected during a Triple A rehab game. <laughs> I mean, he was in there, uh, hurt his shoulder in spring training, so. Started the year on the DL. He was rehabbing in Triple A. Got himself thrown out. Arguing a play at second base. Two and two. I well, we won't use any names to protect the innocent, but uh, apparently one of his teammates, one of his superstar caliber teammates here with the Cincinnati Reds, didn't come out for batting practice when it was his group to hit. Well, Mr. Schumacher went up in the clubhouse and. Requested his presence out on the field. High in the air to left, it backs up in Ciarte. But he's got one. That's the first out here in the eighth. Our APS said as he all starts tonight, that dude BP Brandon Phillips, and he has played some sensational defense for them. A couple of blind throws. That one on the backhanded play up the middle. The easy barehanded play at first, and yeah, this one the best one for me. Very close play at first. But once again, had his back turned to his target, just wheeled around and blindly threw right over the base to Mike Lee covering. He doesn't make that play. The game is tied. The run would score, certainly. And we just saw a few reasons why he's got four gold gloves. He's chatty out there, that's for sure. Another reason the Reds have uh, had trouble scoring runs. We talked about the lack of run support for Mike Leak, and it's this guy right here. He had a career high 103 RBIs last season, and everyone said, "Well, look at the on-base percentages of Shinsu Chu and Joey Votto ahead of him." Those guys were on base almost half the time they were up, and Phillips cashed in with a career year in terms of RBIs. And they have not been on base ahead of him this year. Hey, 
Shin Su Chu, uh, I think they miss him a lot more than they thought they were going to. He was an on base machine. Billy Hamilton may eventually evolve into that guy at the top of the order, but Chu did a great job. Seemingly was on base every at bat for Brandon Phillips, and Joey Votto, and Jay Bruce. That one got uh, Phillips in the toe, it looks like. Wade Miley fielding that one. Yeah, boy, you, every time you looked at uh, league leaders in terms of walks and on base percentage, it was Chu and Votto one and two. Yep. And Goldie was right there behind him all year long. And this year they have had problems scoring runs. Part of that is Billy Hamilton too. They want to develop Billy Hamilton. Utilize that speed but as we talked about last night he, he's got to get on base to make that a, a weapon. And it's you know, an on base percentage of about 270. They decided that uh, they weren't going to pay Shin Su Chu the money he wanted. This is a pop up near second Aaron Hill. Huh? Chu ended up getting one hundred and thirty million dollars from the Texas Rangers. Jazz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game. Wade Miley with a hat in hand. <laughs> oh, on the Phantom Cam, no less. Wow. Look at the Look Fox at in. Phantom Cam. Look at in all the way into the hat. Oh, his eyes are closed. <laughs> There's no way. The Wade Miley Olay. Jay Bruce and the Diamondbacks over shift defensively. Just about everybody over there on the right hand side. Martin Prado was kind of playing in the hole between third and short for the first pitch, but now retreats to a normal shortstop position after that first pitch was a strike one. And once again, he's doing that thing where it looks like he is uh, trying to call timeout. He raises that left hand up in the air. And it looks like he's signaling to the umpire time, but he's just kind of got a. There it is. Just a thing. Yeah, it's one of those things. Jonathan Broxton and he has been sensational this year in that red bullpen. This is where these guys and they can go Broxton and Chapman eight and nine can be a handful. Marshall gets the strikeout and we head to the whole half of the eighth. Diamondbacks trail at five four.
Fans Beach Night at Chase Field only a week away. It's uh, next Friday, June 6th, as we celebrate the sun and surf after the game. Enjoy the Friday night fireworks set to classic surf guitar tunes. All fans who purchase a special Beach Night ticket package will receive a reversible D-backs bucket hat. Well, this has got Bob Brennan written all over it. A limited number of Beach Night ticket packages available, and you only get the bucket hat through the special offer. So visit dbacks.com slash events for tickets today. Big Jonathan Broxton is in to work the eighth. And this guy has been an absolute horse at the back of this bullpen, his 16th appearance this year. He has not given up a run in any of his last six appearances. And he was uh, the closer while Araldus Chapman was on the DL. And now he's back in his uh, setup role. And he'll work to Miguel Montero to lead off the eighth. Miggy so far 0 for 3. Off the glove of Broxton. Phillips is over there behind him. And he throw him out. Several defensive changes for you for the Reds. Todd Frazier has moved over from third base to first. He replaces Roger Bernardino. Zach Cozart back at shortstop. He was the starter there last night. He replaces Santiago. And Santiago moves over to third for Frazier. Martin Prado. 0 for 2. He walked his last time up. it safely in five straight but that's in jeopardy right here. He's actually had an extra base hit in five straight games. His best streak in his career is six. He did it two times uh, most recently in September of 2009. Double looked pretty good right about now. Need a base runner. Prado's bat has been heating up in his last 18 games, hitting almost 350 with 15 RBIs. This is inside, three balls and a strike. Hitters count here for Martin Prado against the guy that likes to use his fastball when he's behind in the count. In the air to center, Billy Hamilton at the track. Two down. Well, fans, for the thrill of the game, baseball's finally here. It's happening all around us, so go grab a Pepsi and some friends and join us at a D-backs game and live it. It's time to live for now. Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Arizona Diamondbacks. We back the D-backs. Here's Aaron Hill. An RBI single his last time up. One for three. Couple of hang with him at bats for Martin Prado in the game tonight. He lined out to left field to start the fourth inning and then a deep fly ball there to center. Just hit it to the wrong part of the park. And he's got his hands full here with big Jonathan Broxton. That's and he filled it as the Reds closer while Chapman was on the DL after Chapman was hit by a line drive. Roxton started the season on the DL himself, coming back from forearm surgery last August. Sanderson Ford bullpen, Addison Reed.
Two and one. Lifted high in the air to center, almost the same spot for Hamilton. Roxton works a 1 2 3 inning and sends us to the ninth. Diamondbacks trail it 5 4. Inning, a look at our Gila River game summary. Diamondbacks have had several chances here to get that tying run across late in the ball game, but just have not been able to get the big hit. They trail it 5 4. The Reds got the big one in the second. Devin Mezzarocco, a grand slam, his seventh home run of the year. After the Diamondbacks had made it 1 0, and the D backs have been playing catch up ever since. It's 5 4 as we start the ninth with Todd Frazier. Up against Evan Marshall, who worked a 1 2 3 8. Pitcher spot is due up next after the double switch, and Chris Heisey is in the on deck circle for the Reds. Frazier's had a good night. Two singles, a walk, he scored twice. One ball and two strikes. Araldus Chapman. And he has been throwing well north of 100, we're told lately. And consistently, consistent 102s and in that neighborhood. He pitches to the temperature wherever he is. <laughs> and he's in the right ballpark then.
talked about Todd Frazier uh, before the ball game last night how occasionally he'll take some funny looking swings up there at the plate. Yeah, yeah. That was the case with the pitch before from Evan Marshall. Yeah, changed his mind at the very last instant just decided to flick the bat at it try to foul it out of play make Marshall throw one more delivery. It may be funny looking but it's effective. I'll tell you what's funny looking his pants. Look at that. You usually see those. Uh, Droopy draws down there, but he's got a couple of layers down by the ankles. This is one we were talking about last year against Brad Ziegler. He actually got a base hit on that swing. You can see the reaction from Brad as it goes over his head. Wore the pants that way uh, last year as well. Two and two. Bouncer in the hole for Owings. Fans follow every D backs game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. You'll get live look ins, instant replay, score, stats, audio, a free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Just download on the App Store or visit dbacks.com. Chris Heise heading for the pitcher. Two forty on the year and a homer five for 14 is a pinch hitter. Including that home run. This guy has uh, developed a knack for that as he. Takes strike one says Kerwin Daniel he's got six RBIs guys as a pinch hitter this year. Two. We see a lot of different approaches from hitters at the major league level. Heisey stands very upright in that right-handed batter's box. It starts from a dead stop. Really tough to get your timing perfect, but he's been doing a nice job off the bench. From Messiah College, a 17th round pick. And Marshall strikes him out. Two strikeouts for Evan Marshall. Two down in the ninth. Catcher Devin Marshall Mazzarocco. just continues to impress. These five hitters here, three of them he's jumped ahead with an 0 2 count. Can use any of his weapons once he gets ahead of a hitter. Devin Mezzarocco did most of the damage on one swing in the second. And he does some more damage on one swing in the ninth. His second home run tonight. He's got five RBIs. And it's 6 4 Cincinnati. A grand slam in the second, a solo shot with two outs in the ninth. Third baseman. The grand slam came on a slow curveball from Bronson Royal. This is a sinker right down the middle of the plate. Caught way too much of the fat part of the strike zone that time, and it looked like on this particular bat, Mezzarocco was ambushing the first fastball he saw. His second career multi homer game, the five RBIs, a new career high. Home runs, numbers seven and eight on the year. That one has bounced into right, Santiago's aboard. Shortstop Zach. Brings up Zach Cozart. Sanderson Ford bullpen. Oliver Perez continues to throw. Mike Harkey. Well, Evan Marshall was uh, rolling along. It looks like that one pitch, that first pitch to Mezzarocco, is kind of still gnawing at him. Brian Price said about Mezzarocco, you know, when he hits the ball this year, it's not little base hits that he's feathering in front of an outfielder. He is driving the ball and hitting it hard, and that one right in the happy zone.
So Kozark get the start at shortstop last night. He's at a four for 24 right now, hitless in his last four games. This is well hit to center field. A.J. Pollock is there. And that's the inning, but the Reds add one more on Mezzarocco's second homer, and now the D-backs will deal with Aroldis Chapman when we come back. Tomorrow, a full day of MLB action starting with the Braves and the Marlins on Fox Sports 1. That is baseball night in America on Fox as the Rays take on the Red Sox or it's Pirates Dodgers. Our MLB doubleheader begins tomorrow, 1230 Pacific on Fox Sports 1, continues at 4 on Fox. If you were going to play a Raldis Chapman bingo, the numbers would all be three-digit numbers. <laughs> you won't find any uh, 70s or... 72s in here, 100 and north of that for the Reds' closer, who was on with a two run lead, his eighth appearance of the year. He has recorded at least one strikeout in each of his seven appearances this season. Six times he's gotten at least two strikeouts, and he is in there this year throwing gas. His average fastball this year sits at 100.2 miles per hour. The average fastball. Stop it. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> Slider at 88. Well, D-backs did a nice job against Chapman here at Chase Field last year in two ball games, one plus innings. Gave up four hits and three earned runs. He walked a couple guys, hit a batter, did not strike out a Diamondbacks hitter here at Chase Field last year. Diamondbacks down to Chris Owings leads off the ninth. 0 for 3 he struck out twice. <laughs> Taking it easy on him 98 0 and 1. A lot of movement on his fastball. It doesn't have time to move. <laughs> oh, hello. Gary Cedar Strong. He was going to make it all the way through nine innings without taking one back there behind the plate. Ouch, big. Speed and gets Owings to chase. I think that's a little change up. He's been working on that. We saw it a few times last year. Just a work in progress for Chapman. You don't see it very often, but 
I mean, what happens when you get a 102 mile an hour fastball, then an 87 mile an hour changeup that moves? And then 100 on the next one. And you can do that consistently, you're going to get some pretty silly swings. This is 100 miles an hour on the Phantom Can from Fox Sports. It doesn't look so fast. Yeah, it looks a lot slower there. <laughs> I wonder if he's throwing all these off speed pitches because he's bored throwing 100 all the time. I don't think you're going to see an off speed pitch here on this 3 2 delivery. I wonder if he's got Phantom Cam. Oh, it could be a slider. Mez Rocco went through a lot of signs back there. It is a slider. Bounced in a hole. Slow roller for Santiago at third. He throws it out. How about that? Now with the reputation of being a dead red fastball pitcher, you get him in a 3 2 count. You anticipate his best pitch, which is that 100 mile an hour fastball. And he snaps off a little baby slider just enough to get in on the hands of Chris Owens and get that easy ground to the left side of the infield. That's not fair. Well, with a left hander in there, they're going to give Cody Ross's right hand bat a chance, and he will hit for Ender in CRT. What he had 192 on the air. He was one for three with a single last night. Ninety-eight strike one. And Nick Evans gonna get an A B. How about that? You're your Nick Evans, you're you know in the big leagues for a while with the Mets. Hadn't seen the big league since 2011. You get called up with your hometown team, and your first at bat is against this guy. 101, two down. And here is the Diamondbacks' debut of Nick Evans from Glendale and St. Mary's High School. He has played all of this season with Triple A Reno, where he was really having a good year for the Gases. Hit 335, 11 homers. He had 44 RBIs in 44 games at Reno and was tied for the PCL lead. His first big league action since 2011 when he was a New York Met. Numbers this year with the Aces. Originally a fifth round draft pick by the Mets in 04. Oh and two. And Nick Evans is now officially the eighth Arizona born player to appear with the D-backs. Ninety nine and that's the ball game the Reds even the series at a game of peace and they take game two of this four game set six to four. They had eleven hits but none bigger than uh, that Mezzarocco grand slam that was the tone setter in the second. Yeah, it really was too bad. Bronson Royal didn't make a lot of mistakes in this game. They really jumped him in that second inning three straight singles uh, in front of the. Mezzarocco grand slam just hung a breaking ball to the Reds catcher and he did not miss it. And so the Reds take it 6 4. Don't forget to late start for a Saturday night for 7 10 first pitch, but a lot to talk about certainly before then. About tonight's ball game, a 6 4 Reds win. And for that, we go on to center field. Joe Borowski is with Tom Walsh. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Our coverage continues into the night with Tom and Max Live coming up in just a matter of moments. But uh, Joe, let's just uh, let's tease this a little bit. We talked in the pregame show about the chess match. Bronson Arroyo against his, his old teammates. Who has the upper hand? Also, you've got 
the the young pitcher Mike Leake going up against his mentor. So how did this play out? Well, we wondered who would make an in-game adjustment or who, whose antics would work the best. Well, it all came down to that second inning. It's what the Reds did against Bronson. I think that caught him off guard. We'll break that down and show you exactly what the Reds did against. Him. All right, we look forward to hearing from you, of course, Joe, but also Bronson Arroyo, Diamondbacks manager Kirk Gibson, Bob Friendly is waiting for us up, up on the broadcast booth. So settle in. We've got to break this one down. Diamondbacks fall in game two of a four-game series to the Cincinnati Reds here at Chase Field tonight. Six for your final. We'll come back with Diamondbacks Live, brought to you by CenturyLink in a matter of moments. Stick around. We'll be back.